Welcome Dr. Leif Pardome, an orthopedic surgeon specializing in advanced arthroscopic surgery in Brighton, Michigan. Today I wanted to talk about the new methods that we have to treat trochanteric bursitis of the hip with hip arthroscopy. Trochanteric bursitis of the hip occurs much more commonly in women than in men, and symptoms typically involve pain on the outside of the hip, which is the greater trochanter area, and direct pressure also causes pain in this area. Diagnosis is made by physical examination and x-rays. MRIs are very rarely necessary for the diagnosis of this disorder. Here you can see an x-ray of the hip joint, including the upper part of the femur, uh, the proximal femur. Uh, the fascia lata is a muscle that begins at the iliac bone and courses all the way down to the knee, but where it runs across the hip, it can compress on the uh, femoral bone proximally at the greater trochanter, uh, and it can create this greater trochanteric bursitis from that mechanical irritation of this tight tendon pressing across the bone. Now the good news is most of the times we can treat this disorder without surgery. Uh, we give patients anti-inflammatory medications, we give them injections into the bursa with corticosteroids, uh, and we also try physical therapy to stretch out that tight fascia lata. And most of the time this will cure the problem. However, in certain patients who fail that sort of treatment protocol, there is surgery as an option. Uh, in the surgery, what we do is we remove the inflamed bursa and we make a slit in that fascia lata so that the fascia lata routes around the greater trochanter and doesn't cause the direct abrasion and compression that made the bursitis in the first place. Uh, in the past, this has been through open surgery, but more recently now we've been able to do this with arthroscopic surgery with smaller incisions and a faster recovery. Now here's an arthroscopic view of the hip. You can see the fascia lata there is the shiny white uh, tendon on the left of the screen. And you can see my instrument is using, uh, being used to clear out the soft tissue and fat that sits on top of it. Next you see me using a special device called an electrothermal ablation device. It's going to split the fascia lata. Uh, this is going to reroute it around the greater trochanter, and then we're going to be able to see the bursa underneath, and we're going to remove that bursa uh, where it's gotten inflamed. Here you can see we're continuing to split the fascia lata uh, towards the pelvis uh, to make sure that we've completely split it enough that we're able to reroute it. Uh, notice we're not disconnecting it, we're just splitting it. Uh, now you can see this device is also being used to, to melt away now the bursa. So the bursa does have a little bit of fat in it. And this filmy white stuff uh, is the bursa tissue that we're going to use this electrothermal ablation wand to basically melt it away. Uh, we also use this other thing called a motorized shaver. Uh, and that basically will eat away the bursa uh, where it's gotten inflamed. Uh, as I said earlier, the bursa will grow back. It just doesn't grow back inflamed now that we've taken care of the pressure phenomenon with the fascia lata. Uh, here you can see this shaver is eating away that bursa tissue. Uh, it's very thick and inflamed in this woman. Once we've removed enough of the bursa, we'll be able to see the tendon of the vastus lateralis. You can see it up there on the left. Uh, and then to the right, we'll see actually the gluteus medius insertion, which is another muscle that inserts onto the hip. Here you can see some more bursal tissue that we're removing. There's the tendon of the vastus lateralis over on the left side of the screen. And again, more of the bursal tissue uh, posteriorly in this patient's hip. Uh, sometimes you'll find muscle tears in the gluteus medius, which can be repaired arthroscopically as well. Here you can see we're just about finished. You can see the, the vastus lateralis tendon on the left and the gluteus medius tendon is on the far right, uh, inserting on the greater trochanter. At the completion of the surgery, the incisions are closed up. Usually they're just two or three small incisions, about a centimeter each. Uh, patients are sent home that same day and are allowed to bear full weight on their leg right away. Uh, typically, crutches are just for comfort only. The sutures are removed after one week and physical therapy usually lasts for four to six weeks after surgery to ensure that the patients regain their full range of motion and their strength, uh, most of which comes back on its own.